Today, former Trump advisor Roger Stone set to be arraigned in federal court. The special counsel accusing him of obstruction and lying to Congress as he vows to fight this one, uh, fight it out, and take it to trial. Former Republican congressman from South Carolina, Trey Gowdy, chaired the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. He joins us right now from Greenville. Good morning, you, Congressman. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Uh, doing okay. Weren't you, uh, weren't you involved in uh, some of the cross-examination of Roger Stone in the past? So uh, what might you be able to uh, shed light-wise on this? Well, I was, I was in the room. I may have asked the questions. That's one of the narratives that unfortunately has been imprinted in our fellow citizens' minds is that the Democrats were the only ones asking Russia questions. Um, I asked Roger Stone a bunch of questions, you, and you have a lot of options when you are asked questions under oath. You can not answer. You can tell the truth. You can assert a privilege. About the only thing you can't do is make a material misrepresentation with the intent to deceive. Now, he's presumed innocent. Um, but I had a unique vantage point for both the questions asked and the answers provided last year. And do you believe he was telling you the truth, or did anything prove that he wasn't? I, uh, among my many limitations, I am not a human polygraph machine. <laughs> I do not know. What, and, and even if he made a factual uh, mistake, I don't know whether or not he had the intent to deceive. Okay. Um, I know we spent a lot of time on this WikiLeaks, uh, whether or not the Trump campaign had knowledge that the information would be disseminated publicly. We spent a lot of time on that. Um, I actually asked him the intermediary question. Adam Schiff couldn't get him to answer it, um, but he answered it for us, for the yep. Republicans, on who the intermedi intermediary was with Julian Assange. All right, so if he, if he didn't tell the truth but didn't realize he wasn't, for instance, you were at a party and you were there and you might have talked to someone and he doesn't remember talking to that person and he said, no, I've never talked to that person. If it turns out he did, but he wasn't intending to lie, he didn't intentionally do it, then, then how does that weigh in the courts? Well, thank goodness every false statement does not result in perjury or a false statement prosecution. If I were to say, I hope you have a good Thursday, well, today's not Thursday. So maybe I just made a mistake. Maybe I didn't recall. It has to be a material misrepresentation with the intent to mm -hmm. deceive. Um, it's tough to win these cases. So the fact that Mueller has brought so many of them and they've resulted in guilty pleas or admissions right. tells me he must feel like he has a pretty good case. Well, By the way, who's that intermediary you were able to find out? You said you were um, found at the intermediary between WikiLeaks and Roger Stone? What? Wasn't it Credico? Oh, oh Randy Credico. That's right. All right. Uh, yeah. it, it will be interesting to see if Robert Mueller decides to go after everybody who lied in fr front of Congress <laughs> during your tenure. That would be a uh, crowded courtroom. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, Congressman, the race for the, the uh, 2020 presidency. And you see, so, and you've got a unique point of view, having been in politics for so long. What do you make of the progressive pull to bring the Democratic Party so far to the left, where it seems like the most popular people right now are offering free everything? Uh, welcome to our world. I mean, I, we have a political process where, where the primary is controlled by the base. Um, and that's true on the Republican side, mm -hmm. and it's true on the Democrat side. Um, so I, they're going to have to sort out what Republicans used to have to sort out. Do you go for someone you think is electable, like a John McCain or Mitt Romney who wound up not being elect electable, or do you go with who the base picks? And the base picked Donald Trump, and he wound up winning. Now, are they going to go with Kamala Harris? Are they going to go with Joe Biden? They have the same issues that we've had during past presidential cycles. The candidate that I know the best is Tulsi Gabbard. Um, and while we may not agree on issues, I don't think she's going to be pulled in any direction she doesn't want to go. And we'll see whether or not the Democrats have an appetite for authenticity as they go through the, no the nominating process. You know, some are saying that South Carolina is in play. The Democrats are really coming hard down there, uh, not only to win their primary when it gets there, but to win the general. Is South Carolina in play? Uh, not the one I live in, um, <laughs> unless there are two South Carolinas. Uh, right. No, uh, yeah. it, 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 this is Tim Scott, you know, Lindsey Graham country. This is not Kamala Harris. Uh, AOC territory. I think the Democrats would like it to be in play, but perhaps that not, that's not the reality. Uh, and maybe I'll live long enough to see that, but I'm going to have to live a long time. Right. My mom is from Greenville, where you are, and she calls that God's country. So do I, and we would love for you to come back to South Carolina, Angela. Well, 
I'll, I'm not going to do that right now. I come back about every weekend, but maybe one day. I, I love that state. I'm right. so proud of you and all the lawmakers there. All have right. done a great job. And our Gamecocks. Indeed. Trey, thank yes, you very much for joining us live.